Today, what I'd like to do is um, begin where first things begin. First things first, that's what I call it. And I want to talk for a few moments on Christ's lordship. Because if we don't get this right, this resolves everything. We can do, we can build, we can give, we can go, we can come. But unless Christ is our Lord, and we don't understand that word here, that comes, that's an English term, a, a Lord. You've, you've, you've read, you've known about the royalty and the hierarchy and royalty in other countries. Um, so nobody calls anybody Lord here. And when someone is Lord, that means they own absolutely everything. And so Jesus, knowing how we sometimes don't understand, he said, and I will start in Matthew 7, 21, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven. So it's more than lip service. But he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, and done many wonders in your name? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness or evil. Now, why so strong? He's strong on this subject. I mean, Prophesying is something religious, spiritual, biblical. Casting out demons is a demonstration of power and, uh, and of the name of Jesus Christ. We did many wonders in your name. We did a lot of things. And he says, you know what? I don't even know who you are. Because unless Jesus Christ is my Lord in everything and in anything in my life, then he's just not Lord at all. And so this is a tough one here. Uh, there was a survey done many years ago. It's kind of still true today. Let me share it with you. Of all the church members in the United States, 10%, you just can't find them. 20% never go to church. 25% never pray. 25% never attend a Sunday service. 30% never read the Bible. 50% never give to the church. 60 never give to world missions. 65, never attend a plug-in group or a small group. 80, never assume a ministry in the church. Absolutely nothing. 95% have never won one person to Christ, but 100% are going to go to heaven. That's what they think. Now, let me say quickly five things that lordship is. Number one, lordship is accepting God's sovereignty. That word sovereign mean, means he's above everything and all. He has all the power and he can do whatever he wants, when he wants, how he wants. So I must accept sovereignty, sovereign, his sovereignty when I think as a man and as a pastor, Lord, how do you take the Gudino's mother away and then a month later you take away their sister? Why does this happen to people? Why is my seven-year-old grandson suffering with cancer and going through chemotherapy? And like he said to his own mother on the way back from San Jose in a moment of reflection, Mom, why am I not a normal little boy? And why do I have to go through this? And there's things in life that we get to find out, but there's other things that we don't get to find out. And, 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 and our joy really comes from one thing, is that Jesus Christ is Lord. That's all I need to know. When I pray for the sick, when I pray for my family members who are in need or sick or whatever the thing, the only thing I really need to know is that he is Lord and he is sovereign and he can do whatever he wants. Uh, an old passage in Job, uh, Bildab was one of Job's friends that came to comfort him, maybe in quotes, and he says, dominion, that's sovereignty, dominion and fear belong to him. He makes peace in his high places. And then he asks us, is there any number to his armies? Upon whom does his light not rise? How then can man be righteous before God? Or how can he be pure who was born of a woman? If even the moon does not shine and the stars are not pure in his sight, how much less a man who is a maggot and the son of man who is a worm? 
What are you doing? Little piece of dust, you, you maggot, you worm. You don't question God. You just accept his lordship. Our mind is too limited to understand the goodness of God, the mercies of God. There was a man in the Bible who understood this and very he wasn't a theologian, he wasn't a rabbi, he wasn't learned in the scriptures, he was a leper. He was an outcast. He had cancer to the hundredth degree and he suffered a contagious and, and disease that ostracized him from the community and set him aside and he had to live in the, in, 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 in the woods and away from the people. And when he had come down from the mountain, great multitudes followed him, Jesus. And behold, a leper came and worshipped him saying, and this man understood Christ's lordship. Lord, he said, if you are willing, you can make me clean. I know you can do it, but if you want to do it, you can do it. Jesus put his hand out and touched him and said, I am willing to be cleansed. And immediately his leprosy was cleansed. And this Lord that we serve, his name is Jesus Christ. He is the King of kings and Lord of lords. He is God above all things. He is beautiful and wonderful and amazing. And he's kind and he's firm and he's love and he's judgment and he's many things. And he... He rules over the kingdoms. What a day, what a week we live today with, uh, with the attack on Israel, uh, Iran's attack with uh, Israel that needs to defend itself with the United States giving maybe yes, no. They're doing the, the one step, two steps forward, one step back, and we need to pray for Israel. Um, but God is in control. And I mean, we had an eclipse a, a week ago and now a war here. Maranatha. If you ever doubted that Jesus is coming, the rapture of the church, it is going to happen. And it's, it seems to be just coming sooner and sooner. So, Reuben, you did the right thing this, this morning in getting your sins forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ. And if the rapture happens today, you go with us. If you don't sin from here to then, and I don't think you will. But there's a lot of kingdoms in this world. Jesus is the kingdom. He's the Lord of all. Kingdoms that are shakable in this world. Communism. Well, you know what happened to that? Capitalism. You know, we're right here. We're like Bitcoin, man. One day you're up there and one day you're asking for mercy. And, and you know, all of that is, sh is shakable. That I've got my money in the bank and it's secured. Secured from whom? Really, it, it, the only, that's shakeable. The health kingdom is shakeable. Hey, do you ever read other? Oh, eggs are good for you. Eggs are not good for you. Eat bananas. Don't eat bananas. Eat oatmeal. Don't eat oatmeal. I just eat everything and go to bed and pray for it. I mean, it, they confuse you. The health kingdoms are shakeable. Sports kingdoms are, are shakeable. And uh, technology and Hollywood and politics, everything is shakeable. The only unshakable kingdom is the kingdom of God, the kingdom of our Lord Jesus Christ. That's it. God is sovereign above all things, doing all things, and he does it right. He never makes a mistake, never makes a mistake, even if it hurts us, even if we don't understand. The second point is that lordship means placing or is placing God first. Then one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question, testing him and saying, Teacher, uh, which is a great commandment in the law? A lawyer comes up to Jesus and says, What's the greatest commandment? He knew, but he wanted to test Jesus. Jesus said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment. So God is first in everything in our life. God is first. He should be the first thing in your day. Okay, when you wake up in the morning, do you reach over for your phone? Or do you say, Thank you, Jesus, that I'm alive? Do you answer emails? Do you, what is it? it you know, I know you're looking at me with that guilt. That's what you do. You, you just go to your phone right away, right? You can hear a mouse burp at Fountain of Truth this morning. God is first. He should get the first day, hour of our day. He should get the first 10% of our income. He should get the, the, the first fruit of everything that we get because he is first in our life. He's got to be. That's what lordship is. When I want to do something, it's I check with him, everything. Now, I wish I could stand up here and say, I have 100% lordship of Jesus Christ in my life. No, I fight it every day just like you do. 
Number three, lordship is accepting responsibility and accountability. And here's where the meat or the, 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 the center of the message is going to be in this amazing story. Jesus would tell stories. They're called parables. And he would tell them to explain things. Jesus was not boring. He was not, you know, a tedious teacher. People flocked to hear him because he would tell stories. And, and he says the stories. And he said, look, the kingdom of heaven is like a man traveling to a far country who called his own servants and delivered his goods to them. And to one of them, he gave five talents. Let's just call that $5,000 so you can understand it. Five talents to another two and to another one. To each according to his ability and immediately he went on a journey so he gives three of his servants talents one five one two one one and they according to their ability we're going to find out right now that as God is handing to us God has entrusted you with income with riches with time with talents with treasure uh, he, he entrusts us with that some he gives more than others and, you know, you might be sitting here this morning and say, fast 21 days, I can barely make it through lunch. Well, maybe, maybe you can fast other things. Maybe you can show your love for God and your, your desire to draw close to God. Making, maybe you can give that to Him uh, and, and not be like somebody that can fast many days or goes without eating for, you know, a few days or, or, or water or things of that nature. So then he who had received the five talents, now watch him, he goes away. Here's your talents, five, two, and one. He goes away. What do they do? Watch. Let's put the camera on the one with five talents. He went and traded with them and made another five talents. He worked them. He did something with them. And likewise, he who had received two gained two more. So the, I didn't do it. So the one with, uh, okay. Devil's a liar. Let's blame the devil. Okay? The one who received two uh, gained two more. But he would receive one, went and dug it in the ground and hid his Lord's money. So these, for two, these first two are working their talents and doubling them. And after a long time, the Lord of those servants came and settled accounts with them. Now, Jesus is telling them a simple story that I just shared with you. And he's really telling them, look, I'm going to give you talents. I'm going to give you blessings. And those usually come in treasures, which is money. It's time, which is more than money. It's more valuable than money. It's talents. Every one of us has treasures, have time and talents and many other things. And the point he's making here is we're going to give account to that. So he who had received five talents came and brought five other talents saying, Lord, you gave me five talents. Look, I gained five more. The Lord said, well done, good and faithful servant. You were faithful over a few things. I'm going to make you rule over many things. Enter into the joy of the Lord. You did good. Now I'm going, to, I'm going to entrust more things to you. He also who had received two talents came and said, Lord, you gave me two. Here's four. The Lord said the same thing. Well done, good and faithful servant. You're faithful over a few things. I'll make you rule over many things. Enter into the joy of the Lord. Then, let's put the camera on this guy. He who had received the one talent came and said. Now he, he becomes theological. You know, people will give you the most biblical answers of why they, don't, they, why they can't fast, why they can't pray, why they can't give, why they can't tithe, why they can't give to a campaign. They'll give you, and watch his, he, he's, he's amazing. Lord, I knew you to be a hard man, reaping where you have not sown and gathering where you have not scattered seed. And Jesus is saying, okay, okay, enough of that. Where's your talent I gave you? And I was afraid. And I went and hid your talent in the ground. Look, there you have what is yours. I'm sorry that's a little full of dirt. You know, and church and friends, when we learn not to put our talents in the earth or in the things of the earth, but learn how to cultivate and multiply them in any aspect of our life. Let God bless you financially, not only so you can give, and I'm not preaching prosperity gospel here, but I am saying let God bless you financially, not only so you can give to the church, give to the poor, give to a widow, pay somebody's food at McDonald's that's behind you in the car, hoping it's not a van with 18 kids. Pay 
be nice to people, be generous. It's, this is a matter of being generosity. But this man hid it in the earth. And his Lord said unto him, watch this. The other guys get good, faithful servant. Come in the joy of the Lord. You've been faithful in little. I'm going to make you um, uh, faithful. Uh, I'm, I'm going to bless you over here. The Lord said to him, you wicked and lazy servant. You knew that I reap where I done, do not sow, and I gather where I do not scatter. You know I don't need your talents. I'm the one who gave it to you in the first place. All three of you had zero before I arrived. Then I gave you five, and I gave you two, and I gave you one. And if you knew one talent guy that I, that I reap where I don't uh, uh, plant, and then I gather where I, didn't, where I didn't spread out. If you knew that, why didn't you know? You know, sometimes we think that what we have is ours. He gave it to us. That ability that you have to, to work, to construct, to sell, to buy, to do business, to teach, to whatever it is that you do. Who do you think that gave you that? Well, I went to school. And who allowed you to go to school? Well, my mom and dad did. And I did my homework. Well, who gave you air to breathe while you were in the library? Who gave you the strength? So here we have a little glimpse of Jesus' business acumen. Jesus, you know, you think he's God. What is he ta talking about? Talents and, and money and all that. That's the story, Jesus. And so he says, so you ought to have deposited my money with the bankers. And at my coming, I would have received back my own interest. This is Jesus. And this is for, I love this because I get to like get back at all of you who criticize on, online. Uh, they're talking about money. Jesus talking about money. And he said, instead of burying it, you should have at least put it in the bank to get, what is it, zero, zero, one right now at Chase Bank. <laughs> don't, don't put it there. Put it in the kingdom of God and, and watch what God's going to do, at least some of it. You could have received interest. You didn't even care that my talent sat in the earth doing absolutely nothing. You could have at least. And sometimes God is looking for that at least, at least. If you couldn't double five, I, I didn't give you five. I gave, I gave the other guy five. I gave the other guy two. I gave you one. Well, this one gave me five. This one gave me four. You should have given me at least two. But at least if you couldn't do that, you should have put it in the bank. And then Jesus said some powerful, for to everyone who has, more will be given. And he will have an abundance. But from him who does not have, even what he has will be taken away. So you notice that people who are generous are usually people that God can trust with blessings. He knows what you're going to do with them. People that put the talent in the earth, he will not. And then if it would finish in verse 25, it said, okay, that's a good lesson. But look at how hard God is here. He didn't say, look, um, you know, just next time if I give you talents, do something. You didn't do right. You ought to learn. Go to Sunday school. No, look at what he says. Cast the unprofitable servant into the outer darkness. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Basically, in very elegant words, Jesus told them to go to hell. I mean, that's what it is. Take this man out of my sight. He disgusts me. Why so strong, Lord? Because lordship means you're accepting responsibility and accountability. So let's look at some observations in this parable. Number one, God has entrusted blessing to each of us. And I want you to notice a highlight portion in the verse. And he delivered his goods to them. Whose goods? God's goods. Everything I have belongs to God. Everything. Everything. My life, my, my house, car. God just took my Audi away the other day. Blessed be his name. He's the Lord. In a crash, for those of you that don't know. My wife is his. My children are his. Hunt is his. So I give everything to the Lord. Everything, really? Who, who's, who's close is that? That's God's too. That, and he'll let you keep it. He'll let you manage it. Your business is not yours. It's God's. I know you think it's yours. You just work it. God allows you to work. God, everything that you have, 
Everything that I have is God. They're his goods that he has given to us. God's gifts are not equally given. He gave five, he gave two, he gave one. People respond differently to their given gifts. Some will multiply it, others will put it in the ground. All of us will be accountable for what we did with our gifts. Okay, let me get some scary music here for you. Not yet, but um, we're going to be responsible for four things. We are going to give account for four things. Every action in our life, every word that comes out of our mind, every thought of our mouth, every thought that crosses our mind, and every penny that God deposited in our hand, we are going to give account. One day, this is what this parable is saying. You're not going to get away with it. You're going to give account with what, everything you said. So stop cussing. Stop thinking. Stop saying the wrong things and stop doing the wrong things. God is going to call us, all, all of us, to accountability. Now, this isn't salvation. This is accountability for when he gives us our rewards. All of us will be rewarded for good stewardship. Everybody. Our responsibility is clear. Our accountability is certain. Number four. Are you all with me this morning? Lordship is doing the will of God. Now, this is serious. When we enter into a 21-day fast, you need to ask God, what is his will for your life? The talents are different. I'm not doing that. You know, a man that works construction and gets up at 4 in the morning and goes out and lays concrete or builds buildings and gets home at 5 o'clock... He's probably not going to fast three meals. You know, he, he needs to eat or he's going to get weak. It's not the same as a retiree who still has strength and can, can get up and pray for two or three hours or, or, or read the Bible or whatever. It, it depends on, your, on who you are and what you do. You, you have a high-pressure job. You know, God isn't there. If you eat, I'll zap you. He's not going to do that. He's, he's, you know, what, what, is, what is the will of God for my life, both in the spiritual journey and in the spiritual campaign? Because you, none of us are probably going to be there, but if you give more than what God is asking of you, you know, <laughs> that's your fault. You didn't ask his will. I think most of us are on, on the other side, though, will give less of what God is really asking. What is not me, it's what God is asking you. And that's what Jesus, and that's what we started with. Not everyone who calls out to me, Lord, Lord, will enter in the kingdom of heaven. Only those who actually do the will of my Father. And we already read that last verse. So, to close now, I told you I'd be short, five uh, number five, lordship is, comes down to personal obedience, regardless of the cost. If God, God, not me, not my pastor, not the, if God tells me to do something, then Lord, help me that I may be obedient. Is there a baby in the Holy of Holies? Oh no, oh no, it's right over here. So Jesus is either the Lord of my life, he doesn't want part of it. He wants all of it. Back in the day when Rachel and I were very young, there was a song called, Jesus Be the Lord of All, the Kingdoms of My Heart, sang by Lanny Wolf. And in, in my heart are kingdoms of a world that's all my own, kingdoms that are only known by myself and God alone. And that song just continues saying, look, because Jesus is not Lord of all, then he's not Lord of all. So the question we have to answer ourselves before anything is, is Christ my Lord? And when we get to that place where we can say, at least I'm trying in every area of my life that he will be my Lord, it is then that our fasting, that our giving, that our generosity all aligns with God. And you know, God has no money problems. God, we're the ones that have mm, financial challenges. But God can touch somebody across the street and, and say, here it is. Or he can make it come through us. But whatever it is, it's the Lord's will. Now, I've got something exciting. I'm going to ask Brother George to come up here because... Um, we're going to do some commitment cards, and he's going to explain them in a, li in a little bit. But here's what I want you to do. I want to, I want to show you how easy this can be. 
everybody get your uh, antichrist apparatus, or otherwise known as your cell phone, okay? And I'm going to ask you a question, okay? I, I want you to go to your notifications, to your alarm, and set your alarm for 5.30 p.m. every day. You can join us, visitors. I'm not going to tap into your bank accounts, okay? Set your alarm for 5.30, Monday through Saturday, and then Sunday, set it for 10.45 a.m. What does that mean? That next Sunday at 10.45, while I'm preaching, a bunch of alarms are going to go on here, okay? If you don't know how to set that, there, there's, there's children in the children's ministry from four to five years old. They would be more than happy to show you how to do this, okay? So what's going to happen? Let me ask you a simple question. Beginning tonight, when your alarm rings at 530, can you stop whatever you're doing and pray for the Beyond campaign, both spiritual and financial, for one minute, for 60 seconds. Do you think you can do that? Now, if you're driving, don't close your eyes. <laughs> but everybody, set your alarm right now, 5.30 p.m. Starting tonight, it's going to ring. I'm sorry, starting tomorrow, because on Sundays, it's for 10.45 Okay, now that's a complicated maneuver there if you don't know how to set two, but you can get help. You have a whole week to get your Sunday alarm. Can you watch what's going to happen all over the county and even into Vegas, other states <laughs> and other counties and Inland Empire at 530, all of our phones are going to ring with the Spanish congregation. They have theirs tied to la cucaracha, la cucaracha, but it's a, it doesn't matter, all right? At 530... Brother Samaron, do you think you can do that? Ask your grandson. He'll set it for you. Okay. You're going to, watch what's going to happen. You're going to be doing a business deal. Your phone's going to, you're going to be sitting with your friend, eating or something. What's that? Oh, what are you doing? Can you excuse me for 60 seconds? My church is getting together to pray right now. We want to draw closer to God. And you just say a prayer and say, Lord, help us. Draw us close. A, a thousand, fifteen hundred people praying every day at 530. Can you imagine? That's fifteen hundred minutes. How many in an, a week? How many in 21 days? There's hundreds and thousands of minutes that are going to go up every day. As we, Did you set your alarms? Okay. Yeah. You six-year-olds that wanted a, a cell phone because I need a cell phone, set it and pray with us. That's what we're going to do. But brother, brother George, I am... I'm thankful for Brother Ben, for yourself, for Sister Liz, all the team that set that up. Brothers and sisters, he'll explain more about the card that you have. Thank you, Pastor. Shalom, everyone. Uh, yes, I do want to thank you, Brother Ben Medina and uh, Sister Myra, Brother Tony Gonzalez, uh, Sister Angelica, Sister Christina. We had a whole team of people, Mark Alvarez, his wife, uh, working tirelessly, honestly, to, to build that tabernacle. And it's going to change your life. It's going to change your prayer life, and that is a guarantee. If it, da if it doesn't during the 21 days, on day 22, come, and I'll give you your money back. All right? No questions asked. But we have two things. Wait, wait a minute. I didn't sign off on that giving you your money back, but it's okay. Go ahead. <laughs> They're not paying anything. Oh, okay. Then we'll give them the money it's back. All right. Yeah. So um, we have the praying through the tabernacle plan. This is meant to go inside your Bible, all right? At least on two occasions during this prayer, you will um, open up your Bible and it's numbered so you know exactly what to do at each uh, uh, object in the tabernacle. And obviously you can't be here all week, but you can do this at home. <laughs> It's two-sided in your own language, and so you, you are going to learn how. Brother George, let me pray. interrupt you here. Yes, sir. Brothers and sisters, this card, make sure you take it and read it. It's numbered, one, two, three. Yes. Because when you go through the tabernacle, either today, next Sunday, during the week, whatever, it'll guide you. You know, I'm not superstitious, and I know these are just symbols, yes. okay? But I, I walked in today, and, and uh, because... This morning, I told Brother George, it took me over an hour just to go through the curtain in my own prayer at home. 
And when I came here and saw that, I said, oh, you're here too? It was amazing. I mean, go ahead. I'm sorry, but I'm excited, so I'm, I will be interrupting you. Yeah, thank you, Pastor. Uh, yeah, we are, we are beyond excited, let me yeah. tell you. And, and I did a short walkthrough with my daughter today. Through We prayed through each element, and it was beautiful. And so, yeah, uh, we have our challenge. Our challenge is, well, God gave us an offer in Exodus 25, 8. He says, they will build me a sanctuary, and I will dwell in their midst. So that is powerful. That's God telling us, hey, I want to be with you if you build that sanctuary. And obviously, we built a sanctuary model there, but the true sanctuary you're going to build in your home, it's going to be your prayer closet, your own time with the Lord, all right? Our response, our reply is printed on both cards. Uh, my reply is, oh God, you are my God. I shall seek you earnestly. And that is the key for this 21-day uh, uh, spiritual journey. I will seek you earnestly because my soul thirsts. For you and when we pair that with prayer and fasting we're fasting we're saying no to food because we are hungry for God we are hungry for God so this is going to change your prayer life and I, and I am giving you that guarantee um, we have the clock of prayer this is going to be used for uh, with your children for instance or even you that's a shortcut once you pray through this three or four times you're not going to need uh, the insert anymore yeah. And if for any reason you come and you forget your insert, uh, we have uh, uh, signs at every one of the objects there that have the same information that you have here. And so you're not going to be there not knowing what to do. All right? So once you have the prayer clock, uh, we're, we're inviting everyone, including our kids, to get involved in this. All right? So we are going to have the three-time-a-day Zoom prayer that's that's a staple in every 21 days that we pray and fast. So that's not even going to be here. You're expected to attend as many of those as you possibly can. But now that we have this prayer, um, spiritual commitment, um, notice it, it should be scored. If it's not scored, uh, just raise your hand and one of the ushers, and uh, ushers, you, you might as well come. Um, they're going to exchange it for you. Just exchange it. W scored means it's easy to be Tear it up, okay? You can, you can, you can really uh, do that. Um, if it's not, just raise your hand. And if you haven't gotten one, raise your hand. The ushers are going to uh, be giving you one. So we're going to be memorizing scripture. Pastor has emphasized uh, Deuteronomy chapter 6, what we call the Shema. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. And you shall love the Lord. And you shall repeat these words to your children. We're going to memorize that passage. It's six verses. And it's going to take us 21 days to memorize it, three full Easy. weeks, all right? So, uh, ushers, if you see somebody with their hand raised, they need, they need the, the cards, all right? So, if you want to do that, what you're going to do, um, and it's going to be easy. I'm going to walk back here. I love this screen, all right? If you're going to memorize the scripture with your family, you're going to check both sides. The reason we're checking both sides is because once we tear this, you're going to turn this side in uh, the ark that we have here, and you're going to keep this with you in your Bible because we don't want to have any excuses to not do something that we promised the Lord we were going to do, right? So if you keep that side, you're always going to know what you need to do. Then we have a daily devotional. If you put your name and your phone number, you are going to get the, the daily devotional via text message. If you want to receive it via email, you can email uh, the office of the church, and they can set you up with that. So if you're going to do that, and here is what we're going to do. We give a little more detail here, all right? But on the other side, you already have a QR code, all right? We have a full uh, spiritual journey guide, 16 pages, that you can just go in and read or download. It's going to explain any of this. I mean, I, I'm thinking it should be self-explanatory, but if you have a doubt as to any of this, the full prayer, uh, the full journey guide is going to explain with detail what happens. So you have the QR code for that. Um, we have a daily devotional. You're going to pray and meditate with a devotional. We're going to read the Bible. Now, we're going beyond, all right? So when you read, it says read one chapter of the Bible per day. It doesn't mean just read one chapter per day. It means add one chapter to whatever you've been doing, 
All right? Go beyond. That's, that's what this whole thing is about. If you've been praying for an hour, go an hour and a half every day. Add something to what you've already been doing. So we're going to read the Bible in the complete journey and also uh, when you receive the text. We tell you exactly what chapters we're suggesting you read. There are going to be chapters that have to do with temple, the presence of God, from Eden all the way to the New Jerusalem. So it's going to be very, very powerful if you actually make that a, a part of your uh, daily devotions. Then we're going to do a daily sacrifice, all right? One sacrifice per day, something, anything. It could be avoiding gossip, all right? That's a big sacrifice for some people, all right? So what does that mean? Uh, you're driving somebody trying to get in your lane on the freeway, you're actually going to let them in. <laughs> you're going to sacrifice. Are you with me? Yeah. All right. Uh, and, and to your kids, it could be like, share your favorite toy with your sister. What? It's for the Lord, right? <laughs> it's a sacrifice. We're going to sacrifice something. It could be big. It could be small. We're going to do something extra. We're going beyond. Then, obviously, uh, if you want to fast all 21 days, you would mark 21 days. If you're only going to fast seven days out of the 21, you can mark here. If you've never fasted in your life, you just got baptized today. All right. Hey, there you go, brother. Uh, fast one day each week, you can mark that. All right. Or you can fast one meal a day for 21 days. This could be for our children, the elderly, those that have diabetes, you know. Whatever, everybody can do and el something and elderly, everybody can go beyond. Elderly is not over 30, okay? <laughs> All right. So that's important as well. Um, my, my children, uh, they're not here, good. Um, my daughter loves um, cheese, quesadillas, anything that has to do with tortillas. She fasted 21 days, no tortillas, no cheese. That was a sacrifice for her. It was a few years ago. But that was her big, huge sacrifice. And every day she was like, oh. But she did it. She kept it. Amen. So, yeah, they can do it. yeah, they can do it too. Then pray for one minute. Pastor, explain that. Uh, you've heard of stop, uh, stop, drop, and roll, right? Uh, <laughs> this is the opposite because that happens when you're on fire. But now we're going to do this because we're not on fire and we need to be, right? So stop, drop, and pray for one minute. And then... Uh, our children, they can pray for 12 minutes, as we said. They can use the, the tabernacle plan, and they can pray one minute at each object. That's automatically 12 minutes per day. If they do two minutes at, it, uh, at each, it's uh, double that, 24 minutes. Our children praying for 24 minutes. That's incredible, right? And then pray for one hour. Pray for at least one hour through the tabernacle plan. And then Sunday prayer, we're going to try to come at least 30 minutes early to pray at the actual tabernacle model. All right? So I think this is going to change your life. And the, the way the tabernacle prayer works is that it will help you to know what to do when you enter into the presence of God. Normally, we enter, we have our list of petitions, 10 to 15 minutes, we're done. We don't know what else to do. And I promised the Lord I was going to pray for one hour. What am I going to do with the other 45 minutes, right? That's when we start extending our, our, our words, you know. Lord, hallelujah, praise you, Jesus. Right? You're not going to do I guarantee you're not going to do that when you use the tabernacle prayer plan. And so it's going gonna, it's gonna to change your life. It's going to change your prayer life. And as I said, even our kids can pray longer than we've been as adults praying every single day. Uh, because of this. Uh, it's going to be really, really powerful. Thank you for your hard work with all of this, Brother George. I oh, know it's, it's been a lot of work. It's, it's, it's been an honor. So, we're going to give you time to talk to the Lord, I guess, right now. Pastor is yeah. going to direct you. Put your name clearly, your phone number, all right? And then, again, you're going to tear one piece, all right? This big one, you stay with it. The small one that, that has your name and phone number is going to go in the ark with Pastor gives you the, the, um, the, uh, the signal, the pens. Uh, on the way out, you can drop them so we can use them for the next uh, service. But uh, yeah, so that's it. That's thank, it. thank you again, brother, for that. This was a lot of work, but I, I think you can tell that we're serious you, about this. This is some great, um, you know, sometimes when pastors talk, we say, well, you talk about a tabernacle and the laver and the, 
showbread, you know, people don't know that. Well, we teach them. You, you learn. You learn. It's not hard. And this will change your life. It really will. Your prayer life on how to pray through the tabernacle. So, as you know, those of you that are in, on the Beyond campaign, that uh, May 5th, we are going to receive commitment cards for the financial journey, for whatever God, during these 21 days, ask God, Lord, what do you want me to do with my talent? What do you want me to do? How do you want me to react to this? And on that day, which is May 5th, we're going to pr bring another commitment card, but that's with finances. And we'll have two years to pay it. If you're visiting us, we're trying to buy this or another building. It's just that simple. That's how we do it. You know, we've done hundred, not hundred, but many of them in 40 years. I've done at least one, two. This would be the third one. So um, we cannot pick up financial, financial commitments without first doing spiritual commitments. Because this means God's in control. So... Right now, if you have thought, well, I'm going to give so much, don't. Don't even think that. Pray it through. Pray it through. Brother George, I know you're back there still, but I am waiting for reports of people to receive the Holy Ghost and the Holy of Holies over there. The prayers are going to get so beautiful and loud in there. You know, now, it's not a magic box, okay? Don't think it's symbolic. But the symbolism just shoots into the New Testament. And when it's all said and done, Christ is the tabernacle. And worse, uh, not worse yet, but scarier yet, you know where the Holy of Holy is now? Brother George is going to explain all that next Sunday. The Holy of Holy is you and me. Know ye not that your body is the veos, the Holy of Holy of God. That's when we receive the Holy Ghost. So it, this is amazing. So here's what we're going to do. You've had time to mark both sides, okay? And I want... I, I want to invite all of you that are committing, even if you're committing to the one minute a day prayer, like that's like, that's all I can do, that's fine, but do pray that minute. I'm going to ask you to come up and bring this card and drop it in this box here. This is a little symbol of the holy holies there. And uh, then stay standing here. Now, before you come up, I'm going to direct traffic now. This is different, okay? Our Spanish service, we have extended it to 1 o'clock. So you don't have to rush out of here. You can go and, and at least walk through today. So when you read this, you can kind of get an idea of what's going on. Walk through it. If you want to pray, stand on the sides. So our Spanish people are not going to come in till half hour later. We did that just so you can have time. All right? That's very important. If you were not here last Sunday, if you did not go to any beyond meetings. Here's what you're going to do after we come up and pray. Sister Lorena, where are you? Sister Lorena, do you see the lady with the flag? She's not taking you to Disneyland, okay? If you did not come last Sunday, she's going to follow her to the blue room. If we weren't fasting, we would have snacks for you, but we don't because we're fasting. I'm going to run over there and take 10 minutes to give you a little book and explain and answer a question, and then you can leave. So that whether there's one of you or five or 20, we have room for you over there. It's a stand-up meeting. You're not even going to sit down, and you'll follow her, but after the prayer, okay? And then, if you don't go to that meeting... And you are going to San Luis Potosí next week, starting Thursday to Mexico. Brother George is going to meet you in the conference room right through there. He's got 10 minutes of instruction for those that are traveling on the mission trips. Okay, let's get serious. How many have a need? Rachel makes me cry. She's been reading through the Bible. And she was in Leviticus. And she said, Sam, the offerings in the Bible, whether they're offerings of prayer or offerings of money or sacrifice, the lambs, what, what they used to give back then. And uh, she said, does it still work today? If I give an offering and can I ask God to heal hunt? I said, well, of course you can, but it, it doesn't work that way. It's his name today that heals. So if you have a need just, just go through these types and shadows 
And, and you can use Old Testament mm, uh, foundations, Old Testament types. And so she, she has put in her heart that uh, that's the name of her offering. Huh? And I said, well, that's good. It, it, it's okay. Of course you can do it, right? Of course you can do it. They did it, they did it in the Bible. So I've given you time to fill out your card, you know, and uh, tear it and bring this, put it in the box and stand here, if you would, and I'll make a prayer for you. I really invite you, if you have a need in your home, in your family, in your business, whatever, to try this and uh, let's see what God does. So would you come? Just drop, drop your card right here. 